Time now to take a look at the weather forecast. The Met Office says Trinidad and Tobago can expect mostly clear conditions tonight. Tomorrow, long sunny spells will be interrupted by light to moderate afternoon showers in varying localities. There's the chance of the afternoon thunder shower over western Trinidad. Gusty winds, street and or flash flooding are likely in heavy showers and thunder showers. Seas are normal with waves below 1.5 meters in open water and they are calm in sheltered areas. Tomorrow's maximum temperature will get up to 34 degrees Celsius at Piaco and 31 degrees at Crown Point in Tobago. Sunrise you can expect at 5.55 and sunset at 6.06. It's a new degree, the only antiperspirant activated directly by movement. Activating protection, bear! The more you move, the more it works. <laughs> new long-lasting degree with motion sense. Help me! Keep running. Drink it up now, drink it up now. Drink it up now, drink it up now. Drink it up now. Oh. Enjoy the new look and send great taste today. Ginseng up, the root of all power. National Training Agency presents Career Fair and Skills Expo 2012. Students, graduates, job seekers, or even looking for a change in your career, come and experience the ultimate event. It's absolutely free on September 18th and 19th at the Center of Excellence, Bokoya. On September 21st, Gulf City Mall, Laramie. And on September 27th, Gulf City Mall, Lowlands, Tobago. Also, here's your last chance to register for the World Welcome back. A family of four from Kokorit is pleading for assistance after a landslide destroyed several walls in its home, making it unlivable. Dave Peter says his complaints have fallen on deaf ears and he has no idea where he and his family will spend the night. Chester Sambrano paid a visit to the Peters family today and he has this report. Packing up with no place to go. The Peters family was awakened at 5 o'clock on Thursday morning by the sound of a loud thud and the cracking of walls. Following overnight rains on Wednesday, a landslide came down, stopping short of destroying the entire house. CNC3 visited what's left of the family home at Waterhole in Kokorit. And from a glance, you can tell that it's dangerous for anyone to live here. The time is up for this wall, as it has become irreparable. Dave Peters, who lives here with his wife and two sons, tells us he is grateful that nobody was injured. They now have no choice but to pack up and leave. But there's one problem. They have nowhere to go. We are not sure exactly where we are going to sleep, but God will provide. Peters says for over a year they have been appealing to the relevant authorities for help, but to no avail. He explains that some persons from the ODPM visited them, but could give no assurances. When you are doing something like that and no one is responding, you would feel how you would feel as though no one is, no one cares. And you're just on your own. And I'm, at this moment, I'm feeling as though I'm on my own. He says his parents' home next door is also in jeopardy and even the track leading to their home is eroding on a daily basis because of the mountain water. Peters wants somebody to urgently help his family. I am Chester Sambrano, reporting for CNC3 News. A fair tonight that the only bridge which links Sangre Grande to Matlot and Toko could collapse if repair works are not completed soon. The fair is felt by councillor for Toko Fishing Pond, Terry Rondon, who says works which commenced two years ago stopped abruptly and he is demanding that someone in authority take immediate steps to ensure a disaster does not occur. We have more from Melissa Williams. 
Councillor for Toko Fishing Pond, Terry Rondon, is not a happy man. The well-known councillor took CNC3 News to the 25 and 3 quarter mile mark Main Road Bridge, which links three communities and serves as a main thoroughfare for those entering and exiting Toko. The councillor says two years ago, construction work began on the bridge to repair it following landslips and cracks. He says the works ended without any word and he wants answers. And this bridge construction was started over two years now and stopped and it is posing a danger for the motorists especially those who holiday makers who come on weekend with those big buses who don't know the road and I, my appeal again to the ministry of work that is the guayco division in sandy grandi you know, to do something about this. this. This is overbearing. He says the steel beams which were being used have now rusted. And what's worse, he says, is that motorists have no idea that the road is a death trap waiting to claim knives. You see holes on both sides. Holes on both sides. That the almighty God staring these people away from, from, from accident, you know. But danger, this is very, very dangerous, especially at night. In addition to this, the council fears that if there are heavy rains, the bridge could collapse and leave thousands of people marooned and trapped. And it's the only, the only road from San Grande to Mata. There are no other place that you can pass, you know. One way in, one way out. Councillor Rondon is calling for a meeting with Works Minister Emmanuel George to remedy the situation. I am Melissa Williams reporting for CNC3 News. We'll take a quick break now. When we return, we look at international development. Stay tuned. Smooth in, frizz out. Suave Professionals Keratin Infusion Shampoo and Conditioner is infused with keratin. It controls frizz for up to 48 hours. Salon proven to smooth as well as Kerastase Ban Oleo Relax. It's now time for a summary of the main international stories of the day. Protests have spread across the Arab world against the film that mocks the Prophet Muhammad. In Yemen, demonstrators broke into the U.S. Embassy compound. President Obama promised to do whatever is necessary to protect Americans abroad. The new Libyan Prime Minister says arrests have been made in connection with Tuesday's attack on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, during which the ambassador was killed. The Prime Minister said he did not want to damage relations with the U.S. Dozens of funerals have taken place across Karachi on a day of mourning for more than 260 people killed in a fire in a garment factory on Tuesday. The factory owners are facing a charge of conspiracy to murder. And an official report into the sinking of the sh cruise ship, the Costa Concordia, off the coast of Italy has put most of the blame on the captain. It says he sailed too fast and too close to the land. Returning home now, days after gang violence broke out in Laventil, the top brass of the police service and possibly the National Security Minister will be going into the area to meet with those in the community. Last weekend, a rise in gang warfare claimed five lives, four in the Beverly Hills area alone. A verbal peace deal has been brokered by counsellor for the area, Aisha Wells, and the army has been deployed alongside the police to prevent further bloodshed and to keep the peace in Laventil. Since then, there have been no murders, although there has been one report of a shooting with intent at Evans Trace. But today, Acting Commissioner of Police Stephen Williams revealed that he and members of the police service will be going into the community to meet with all those who live there, including traumatized residents who have been pleading for an end to the violence. The Acting Commissioner says the meeting should not be seen as negotiations with gang leaders. The Acting Commissioner says the National Security Minister, Jack Warner, has been invited to come along but could not say for certain if he would be there. He says the meeting is to address the concerns of those affected and to determine further steps in making the area safe. Police are awaiting the results of an autopsy to determine exactly how a 54-year-old Gaspar Loman died. The man, Shamshuk Premchand, was found lying motionless at the side of the road. Reports say around 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, Premchand, who lived at Teak Avenue, was found dead along Rampasad Avenue. Police say marks were seen on the 54-year-old's body, but they cannot say if they were due to violence or if the bruises were sustained after he collapsed. 
Three sailors who were taken to hospital in a critical condition following an accident on Wednesday, which claimed the life of their colleague, are all said to be in stable condition and recovering. On Wednesday, able-bodied seaman Miguel Daniel of La Hoquita died while undergoing surgery after the land cruiser he was driving collided with another vehicle and landed in a river close to the Aruca intersection. Assistant cook Karen Adams, able rate Josette Richardson and able seaman Edmund were in a serious condition. But today the Coast Guard says all three underwent life-saving surgeries and are recovering well. The trio was visited at the West Shore Medical Facility by Brigadier General Kenrick Mirage and Executive Officer of the Coast Guard, Daryl Daniel. Funeral arrangements are yet to be made for able-bodied seaman uh, Daniel and investigations into the accident are continuing. Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly, Orville London, has invited the minority leader Ashworth Jack and his party to examine the Assembly's books on the bold arrangement for the $143 million administrative complex for the Agriculture Division at Chauvin in southwest Tobago. Mr. London says he is all for accountability and transparency. Mr. London insists that contrary to the impression being given by the minority, the Tobago Organization of the People, the purchase of three acres of land for $12 million at Chauvin, then leasing it to special purpose company Milshu for the bolt arrangement, would save the assembly tens of millions of dollars. He explained that the owners had placed the price tag of $16.4 million on the land and if they were allowed to continue ownership, the assembly would have had to pay interest on that price over the 20-year lease period. Now, the Going for Gold Collector's CD to mark this country's Golden Jubilee has taken up less than $2 million of its $5 million government-funded budget. The Collector box set is expected to be released in six weeks. Soca superstar Marshall Montano, who was the primary force behind the Going for Gold album, says the music will reflect this moment of Trinidad and Tobago's history as we celebrate our golden anniversary of independence. But we'll see collaboration with international artists as well. We collaborated with many local writers, local producers, and forms of local music. We did a mix of Calypso, Soca, Chutney, Pan and beyond. Marshall also collaborated with his Soka Monarch rival, Iowa George, on the album. The album is part of a box set with two DVDs and is being touted as a collector's item that will cost the same price as a regular CD. Planning Minister Dr. Botiwari and the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Planning explained how the proceeds from the sale of the box set will be divided. Basically, the contract calls for 50% going to the artists, that's to say uh, Marshall, and and 50% coming to the government. And out of Marshall's 50%, he makes a contribution, I wouldn't like to say it's how much, to the things that the government will invest its money in as well. The government allocated $5 million for the production of the box set, and so far it's 90% completed and cost less than half the budget. Montana wanted to clear up the perception that the Going for Gold project was all about him. The Soka star says the songs will filter into Carnival 2013 as well. It's now time to tell you how you voted in our Your Vote segment. And the question that we asked you tonight was, do you believe that increasing the powers of the Integrity Commission, as it has asked, would make a difference in the fight against corruption? And in our final vote, 72% of you said yes and 28% of you said no. Thank you so much for participating in our newscast. We love hearing from you. That brings us to the end of the news here on CNC3. I am Golda Lee Bruce. I'm Sam